Welcome to MSPTDA video number 31. Yes, Microsoft Power Tools for Data Analysis. And in this video, we want to talk about faster DAX averages using either average X or distinct count. And we're going to time the formulas using the amazing program DAX Studio. In the links below the video, you can download this Power BI desktop file. Now, we're using Power BI desktop, but everything we learn about in this video can equally be applied in Excel Power Pivot. Now, I have already used Power Query to import all of these tables from an SQL database. Here's the transactions, and then we have dimension tables, date, country, and product. Our goal is to calculate this matrix that has date periods off to the left, total sales, and then three different averages, average country sales, average daily sales, and average monthly sales. Now, the thing about calculating an average is there's not just one way to do this. With DAX, we can use the X function, average X, or we can simply add up all the sales and divide by the count. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to create different measures and then go over to DAX Studio and time our measures and see which one is fastest and most efficient. Now, over here in our start file, we're in relationship view. Let's go over and start by building a report in report view. I'm going to select the white. Over in visualizations, we'll use the matrix. Over in D date, we want year hierarchy. So I'm going to check. I see it there in the row area. There it is. Now let's go over to the paint roller. This is where we can format and change our visualization. Grid, we're going to say text size maybe up to 11. We'll collapse grid. And then row headers. We want to make this like a pivot table. So we're going to check the expand and collapse buttons. Look at that. So 2014, I could drag this edge down. Now we have expand and collapse buttons, just like we do in a pivot table. From F transactions, we already have a basic total sales, so I'm going to check. We'll collapse the years and only show the months for 2014. Now we want to create a bunch of different averages and then time. With F transactions selected, we go over to modeling. New measure, average country sales, and I'm going to say AVEX, because this will be our average X country sale calculation, equal sign. And the goal of this formula is to first calculate the total sales for every single country and then calculate an average. Not only that, but the formula needs to have different amounts for each country for each date period. Now, if we had to do this over in Excel, that would be a bunch of complicated calculations. But in DAX, we have some great functions like average x. The first argument of average x is the table. If we give it d country, the first column in that table has a unique list of every single country, comma. Then we, in the expression, which is our formula, square bracket t, there's our total sales. Average x does two things. It takes the expression and it iterates over every single row in D country and calculates the country total for every single country. Once it gets that array of numbers, the second part is it makes the average calculation. Close parentheses. That is a beautiful formula. Enter. We can add some number formatting. With our matrix selected, now we can check our average. And that is amazing. We can see in February 2014, on average, country sales were 49,000, whereas in June 2014, on average, 618,000. Now let's see if we can calculate the same calculation in a different way. Making sure that F transaction is selected, we select New Measure, Average Country Sales. And I'm going to put DC because we're going to use Distinct Count. And the distinct count is going to be on the fact table, and it's going to be using a foreign key. Now we're going to have to add up the sales and divide by the count. Anytime we're dividing in DAX, it's helpful to use the divide function. If one of the averages has a 0 in the denominator, instead of getting an error, we'll get a blank. Now square bracket for the numerator. We're using our total sales comma, distinct count function. And we're going to be looking at the F transaction table. And there's the foreign key, country code, tab. Now, distinct count, 
we'll look through that country code column in the fact table. And for any one of these periods, it will get a distinct or unique list of countries. That's the perfect denominator for total sales. Close parentheses and Enter. We'll add some formatting. I can come over here and check. And I get exactly the same number in every single cell. Now, whereas this formula is using distinct count and actually looking at the facts in the fact table, so for any time period, it's always going to have the correct unique count of countries. This other formula does something slightly different. Because that D country, there may be countries in that first column that didn't have sales in some particular time period. But the cool thing about average X is this total sales, if it goes to make a calculation and there aren't any sales, the formula will deliver a blank. And average X is programmed to ignore blanks. And by the way, that's the same as the average function in an Excel worksheet, which would ignore an empty cell. Now over in this file right here on the sheet test, we want to talk about two important points. Here's a small fact table, units and country ID. And here's a D country table. The first thing is, if I F2 use the average function, it totally ignores an empty cell. Similarly, if I add it up, the total units for each country, including a blank for Brazil, the average function, of course, would ignore that empty cell. The same thing will happen in DAX. Over here, I've already added these tables to the data model and created these DAX measures. Average and average X working on the units column will calculate 2.5, ignoring that empty cell or blank. Then we made average country units sold using average X calculation, where we iterate over D country, calculate total units. And we did divide, taking total units and distinct count on the fact table country ID. And of course, we get 5, same as over here. So the average X formula is ignoring that blank row for Brazil. And distinct count in our second measure, of course, is getting a count of 2, which is the correct number for our denominator. The problem might come if you use distinct count not on the fact table, but on one of the D country attributes column. Then, of course, you get a count of 3, and you get a number that's probably not what you want. Now we want to go time these two formulas. I'm going to Control S to save. Now I have an icon on my taskbar for DAX Studio. If you don't have DAX Studio, go search Google and download it. It's a free download. Now we have an option, and we want to connect to Power BI. There's our file. I'm going to click Connect. We can see our tables over here. Over here on the white, I'm going to click, hold Control, and Roll. Now we're going to time formulas. And DAX Studio over here is expecting a table that it can display down here. So we're going to trick it. We're first going to use the Evaluate command. That allows us to evaluate a table. Enter, and we're going to use the Row function. Now the Row function has two arguments. Some name we're going to put in double quotes like x. That will be the name of the column. And the expression is our formula. Now using Row and Evaluate to time a formula is the trick we have to do in DAX Studio to time our formula. Now I'm going to come back over here. And up in the formula bar, copy this whole thing, Control-C, Escape, Alt-Tab. And I'm going to backspace, Control-V. Right, So we're going to have, that's the name of the column. There's our calculation. Now if we come to the end and close parentheses, I haven't turned on any timings. If I click Run, that's all it does. DAX Studio shows us the result of this query. But I actually want to time it. And each time I run it, I want to clear the cache so I get a complete timing of each formula. So I'm going to say Clear and then Run, Server Timings. Now we get this little section over here. Oh, this is amazing. Now let's just go ahead and run this. And you have to run it a few times because you will get different results each time you do it. And here's the things you want to look at when you're comparing formulas to see which is more efficient. The total time it took to calculate, the two parts, formula engine and storage engine, how many rows were materialized as a table inside the DAX formulas, how many queries there are. You can also look at 
XM SQL. This is the language that the columnar database and XVelocity engine use to calculate DAX formulas. Now, the first part is it's 11 milliseconds. Now, milliseconds, that is incredibly small. So actually, for our data set, data size, data type, and all the elements that make up our data, it's not going to matter which formula we really use. But we can still learn about which formula is internally run more efficiently. The two parts, formula engine and storage engine. We would prefer to have our DAX formulas use the storage engine. And the reason why? The storage engine, when it calculates, can use multiple processors, whereas the formula engine can only use one processor. We can actually see the interplay here between processors. SE CPU, 47 total milliseconds. 5.9 processors used. If I take 47 divided by that, I get 8 milliseconds. This is the actual time it took to calculate. These two together are added up to 11. We can see we have two different queries that were run. We can also see that there were 129 rows in a table materialized inside our formula. And that comes from the iterating over the D country. The smaller the size of the iteration, the less time the formula has to take calculating. So in general, if we can materialize fewer rows inside of our formula, the formula will be more efficient. If we look over at the XMSQL, for each one of the queries, we can look for the callback data ID. Now, this is a danger sign because it means the storage engine and formula engine had to pass things back and forth to get a calculation done. Now, sometimes when we see this, we can find an alternative. Other times, we cannot find an alternative. So those are the different things we want to look at. Now I'm going to create an evaluate statement for our second formula. And there it is. This is the distinct count on the fact table foreign key. I highlight and I run it a few times. We can see it uses two parts of the engine. The total is 5 milliseconds. We can see there was one query run. We have exactly one row materialized. And I don't see any callback ID. So it looks like this formula is going to be more efficient. Back over here in Power BI Desktop, I've created a few other formulas. Average daily sales, and we can see we use the D date table, which has a unique list of days in the first column, and we iterate using total sales. There's our average daily sales. Then I created a second measure, this time taking total sales. And there it is, our distinct count with the date foreign key in our fact table. If we go and time these, and all of these pictures are in our PDF notes that you can download below the video. Sure enough, just like our first example, the average X iterating has various inefficiencies, whereas total sales divided by distinct count has many fewer efficiency problems. Back over here in Power BI Desktop, we have average monthly sales done with average X and distinct count, but done on the dimension table attribute column year and month. Let's look at sum x. We do not have a table with the correct year month grain. So we use the values function and the date dimension attribute month year. That gives us a table inside the first argument of average x with the correct grain. And then we iterate our total sales. There's the amounts. If we come over and select our second measure, here in our distinct count, we do not have a fact table foreign key for month year. So we went ahead and used the date table attribute column month and year. Now if the fact table has some missing months, this formula will give us a different answer. But for us, we had all of the months. And as you would guess, when you time the average x as compared to the distinct count, the average x is going to have some inefficiencies that the distinct count does not. All right, in this video, we saw a bunch of different average functions. And we learned that using average x iterates a bunch. If we have a foreign key in the fact table and we use distinct count, we saw when we timed them, this type of average formula tended to be faster than average x. All right, if you like that video, be sure to click that thumbs up, leave a comment, and subscribe, because there's always lots more videos to come from Excel is Fun. All right, we'll see you next video.